Okay, everybody get comfortable. I think we are pretty much ready to start. So firstly, I'd like to say thank you everyone for attending the media conference here today. It is, as you can see, taking place in person, of course, but this is a hybrid media conference. So we also have journalists who will be sending questions online for our speakers to answer. But we will be starting with our guests here and we will ask you to raise your hand and somebody will come around with a microphone and I'll just ask you to say your name very clearly and the news organization that you're from before you ask one of our speakers a question. And we will try and get through as many questions, of course, as we can today. But firstly, let me just welcome our speakers. Of course, here we have George Yerolimpus, the Secretary General and CEO of the International Boxing Association. We have Mr. Umar Kremlev, the President of the IBA. And we also have, thank you, please, round of applause for all our guests. Thank you. And we also have legendary boxer Roy Jones Jr. And we also have world and Olympic champion Estelle Mosley. Thank you very much. Absolutely wonderful to have our speakers here to answer all your questions. Thank you to all the media for coming today. So a lot to talk about, and of course, this is all happening alongside the IBA Men's Boxing World Championships here in Uzbekistan. So what a wonderful occasion to hold this press conference. I'm sure you have a lot of questions. So if I can ask you all to raise your hands, we'll come round one at a time. So let's get started. So please feel free. Who would like to be the brave person that goes first with a question? Please just raise your hand. Yes, thank you. We're going to take a question for the president first. Please just raise your hand. To the gentleman at the front. Hello, check. Hi, uh, my name is Bimal and I'm from Inside the Games. Uh, good evening to all of you. Uh, my first question is, uh, what is... Excuse me, I'm sorry, before we start the first question, we would like to give the floor to the president with a few words, he'd like to say a few words. Mr. Umar Kremlev. No, I want to welcome uh, good afternoon, dear ladies and gentlemen. I am very happy to greet you all here, to see you all here, and take into account that all the mass media who are here today with us, they are developing, who they are, uh, they are helping us to develop the sport, and definitely the coverage, the mass media coverage, is very important in developing the sports. Your support is very important for us, and the world champion ship that is happening on that started that has launched yesterday is very important event and uh, we we are having uh, a lot of boxers from uh, different countries more than 500 sportsmen and only limited amount of people will become champions uzbekistan has become the capital of international box and yesterday there was an opening of the world championship and today the first fights have already been held i want to thank the organizers for the highest level of organization the government of uzbekistan the national federations and also the boxers of uzbekistan because because they are the driving force of this championship because of their talent because of their efforts and aspirations now we are in Tashkent and our goal today of the inter as an international association is uh, to support the sportsmen to to let them win to to have their flag up and I know 
but but having their anthem um, sang and having their flags up is not enough. Uh, at the same time, boxers should be becoming popular and should be awarded not only with medals but also with monetary prizes. And championship championship has no ex will be no exception. And champions should not only represent their countries, but they also should be able to support their families, their loved ones. These are the values why International Boxing Association is existing, and that's the reason why we should develop our association. And when parents are sending their kids into sports, they should understand that in future their kid will be able to support his family. Thank you very much. Now I would like to move to the questions. Thank you very much, Mr. Uma Kremlev, the IBA president there with a welcome for you all. And now we're going to move over to Estelle Mosley, the world and Olympic champion, who's going to also give a few welcome words. I'm really happy to be here in Uzbekistan for the Men World Championship. I come in many, many world championship and I, I, I can say that yesterday um, it was the best opening ceremony I saw. Fighters will have the possibility uh, to change their life here in Tashkent and big prize money, big event, and for sure we will see big fights. Here is the first step before Olympic Games here in uh, Tashkent. Many countries come and uh, for only one reason, the victory. And I want to say be focused, be strong and good luck to everybody. Thank you very much, Estelle. Now over to Roy Jones Jr. who also has a few wel welcome words for you. Thank you. Um, I just want to say hello to everybody. Congratulate everybody for coming to the tournament. Uh, it's an awesome tournament again. And like she said, yesterday was one of the best openings that I've ever seen at any tournament anywhere. So, you know, people don't understand that IBA is really uplifting amateur boxing, uplifting lifting boxing all over the world, uh, international boxing. And with that being said, it's like they even have the uh, Brzezinko Trophy this time, which is for a guy. Brzezinko was the guy that was in World War II. That was in Ukraine, was in German prison, but he was Ukrainian. He boxed in the concentration camp in World War II and helped free so many different people. He wouldn't give up. And he was Ukrainian. So people keep trying to make the world seem like it's against one another. But we've been fighting this thing for a long time. We are all here in boxing as one person. We're not here as certain countries fighting against countries. We're all together. We try to bring everybody together and make it better. And yeah, we fight, but we also fight for equality for everybody. We're not trying to say one person is better than the next. Anybody can become world champion. We invite everybody to come participate because we just want to see who the next world champions are. So for what, for people saying things that you know, are inappropriate or saying that IBA is not doing their job, IBA is going over and above to lift amateur or lift international boxing better than it's ever been before. Since when, when I grew up, I, I couldn't even think of being able to support my family after winning a tournament because they gave you nothing but a trophy or a medal. Now you can actually win enough prize money in a tournament to support your whole family. And that's saying a lot. So you don't have to necessarily be a professional fighter anymore because back then certain countries weren't even allowed to turn pro. Now they don't need to turn pro. So it's such a beautiful thing that IBA is doing. I'm very proud of it. I'm very happy for what Umar has brought to the table. Uh, I'm so inspired to see these young people have so many good opportunities. And I, if I were you, I would keep supporting IBA, uh, international boxing, and we still are going to push forward for the Olympic Games. Thank you. Thank you very much, Roy. Well, now we will return to the audience for those questions. And we'll start as we were with the gentleman at the front there. Again, if you could please. Well, there we go. You have the microphone. Uh, hi again. Uh, my name is Vimal, and I'm from Inside the Games. Uh, my first question is uh, one that everybody wants to know. 
uh, what is the current situation with the International Olympic Committee and the IBA? Is there any sort of dialogue happening? Okay, George, Chu, would you like to answer this question or Mr. Kremler? We have commission um, uh, consisting of the presidents of the continents and our general secretary, and we are doing collaborative efforts. And I think that we will be coming to a conclusion very soon because IB has no problems with the recommendations given by uh, International Olympic Committee, all of the requirements and requests and um, uh, framework has been uh, met and um, uh, complied. We have complied with all. And I think that our uh, General Secretary, Mr. George, will be able to answer this question more in details. Okay, George, over to you. Please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, as our president uh, mentioned uh, before, we had today the first meeting of the ad hoc uh, committee created by the board of directors, which is uh, committee is the communication committee uh, with IOC. We created this committee in order to facilitate and create the path of communication uh, with IOC and to find the solution. And uh, we had the first meeting today. Um, uh, this uh, committee is composed, as our president mentioned, uh, by all the continental presidents, plus the vice president, Mr. Singh, uh, uh, from India, and uh, plus, as a member of the board of directors, uh, Mr. Zhu, who is uh, also the deputy minister of uh, sport in China. And uh, we took some uh, decisions, and uh, we will uh, act uh, immediately uh, from tomorrow. Thank you very much. Okay, if somebody would like to raise their hand, we will to the gentleman over in the corner on the left there. Здравствуйте, uh, Umar Nazarovic. Uh, Umar Nazarovic, uh, good afternoon, a Chinese uh, agency, SIMPA. Recently, you had a travel to China. And can you please share your experience and your, uh, uh, your experience? Yes, uh, my trip was really successful and visited several cities and China is a huge country where uh, which is developing in a very efficient way and it is great to see culture values instilled from childhood and uh, uh, there are the different school programs uh, in, in boxing initiated from very early on and and our advisors of IBA are going to assist uh, in uh, working and creating uh, the early school program in, in boxing. This is going to be an additional step in to to develop uh, boxing to further develop boxing we've seen that boxing is strong in many asian countries such as china or, or india and we see uh, successful championships uh, we see plans of organizing other tournaments as well and we've been discussing several future opportunities so all i can say is thank you very much for china and also for the people of china for their support and for their love for boxing and we're happy to see that uh, the love uh, for boxing is instilled uh, among children as well it is so nice to see how active they are how dynamically they are developing how interested they are in boxing and in developing boxing and in spreading the love of boxing to other countries as well so with 
all my respect, I would like to thank China and, and its people for their great attitude towards boxing. Excellent. Thank you very much. Okay, to the gentleman just in the middle there, please. Thank you. Yes, hello, uh, good afternoon. Uh, Brian Pinelli, uh, independent journalist. Uh, first question for Mr. Kremlev. Uh, obviously, as we all know, during during a different difficult bout, uh, a smart fighter will change strategy and, and, and tactics many times. Uh, as you move forward here, leading the IBA and this uh, difficult situation with the IOC, uh, are there any plans to you know, change strategy, uh, change your tactics uh, to, to potentially enable some com more communication in the future. And, uh, and, and if the IBA doesn't once again uh, become recognized by the IOC, is there a different strategy to, to move forward in, in, in another direction? Can, can the IBA and can boxing thrive without potentially being in the Olympic Games after many, many years. So uh, your, your thoughts on, on both of those. Thank you. Well, that was a great question. I really liked your question. Boxing is a great sport. And yes, indeed, we have chosen our path. And uh, for us, it is very important to have world championships. And it is of utmost importance uh, to provide opportunities for boxers. We know that boxers, uh, very often, they originate from poor families. It is very important for us to provide the opportunity to the athletes to provide for their families. That's why we put our emphasis and our accent on, on improving and developing uh, boxing. We fight for every coach, for every athlete, and for every national federation. And we demonstrate our independence because we don't want anyone to guide and to govern IBA from the outside. For example, President C. Kivu, my predecessor, he was the member of the board of directors and at the IOC, and he also was the candidate to become the president of IOC. The corruption, the debt, the bankruptcy, and uh, they, it, it was all proven by the independent investigation of Professor McLaren. So all the questions, they should be raised and should be asked from from a CKV. So the question is why no decision has been made so far with regards to CKV. Uh, there were uh, problems with the, with corruption in 2012, in 2016. I was not even involved in boxing back at the time. So all the questions should be asked from CKV, from their own member. Why did this all happen today? As, for, as of today, there are no problems at IBA. We have a commission, uh, a committee, sorry, that is dealing with IOC. Basically, I don't see uh, the reason or the point to explain anything. Uh, I, I, I'm sure that they don't like me. Uh, they don't. They didn't like the fact that I'm not licking anyone's ass. Uh, sorry for uh, for saying it uh, such in such a straightforward way. But indeed, maybe they don't like us providing and giving prize money. Prize money, which is even greater than the prize money at the Olympics. This is all their own problem. The the IOC exists uh, our, our organization exists for us to provide all the money to the athletes we don't want to pay for five-star hotels or for travels of functionaries of sports officials no we would like to dedicate all money to athletes i can't see any hurdles or difficulties in our communication with ioc i don't see um, any problems or any hurdles so there are no financial problems that we would face there are no debts there uh, there are no violations in the judging system. We 
we see independent experts that that uh, work with us we've done uh, huge work in the last two years and our medals are of pure gold uh, this is not only gold plated medals they're pure gold so we are uh, indeed from the inside we are a clear and open organization we are an open organization to all and we are going to fight for every athlete for every coach and we would like to have boxing at every tournament at every sports event including the olympic games and we will not let anyone to exclude boxing from a sports event so today i can't really see any problems for us to start a uh, cooperation with IOC. The only thing is that we have to start uh, communication, we have to start collaboration, and we should avoid repeating old problems and mistakes. Boxing should be governed by boxers themselves, and today boxers are the ones who are leading the organization. I used to do boxing myself, and I think the most important is uh, what the boxers and what athletes, what national federations and coaches think about me. My, my, my main task is to have them satisfied and I'm not their leader. I'm not their owner, their governor, and I'm, I'm not the boss. I'm here to provide uh, the right conditions for them. That's all I say in the office of IBA. We are service providers. Our task is service provision. All sports functionaries and uh, official, uh, uh, sport, sport officials, uh, they are here to provide services for the athletes. And we should not violate the, the main core principles of, uh, of the Olympic Games and of sport events. All we have to do is promote the development of the sport. We need to provide help and assistance to develop sport and boxing on a national level to help national federations. That's all we do. We fulfill our tasks and our obligations. Thank you very much, Mr. Kremler. Very good question indeed there from Brian. Thank you. Um, we now have one of our journalists online who would like to ask a question, and we're going to go over to Rohith from Reuters News Agency online. If that Hi, can you hear me? Oh, yes, I can hear you. Can you hear us okay? Yes, I can. Uh, I, yeah, so my question is, uh, it's basically regarding the breakaway body, which is world boxing, and they said they are not in a fight with the IBA and there is also no bar on any federation being a member of both bodies. I just wanted to know what is the IBA stance on that? Who was your question for, please, Rohit? Well, you know, we say that there's always a black sheep in a family. There are always people who who go their own ways. We need to keep our dignity. And as for this situation, yes, indeed, I've, I've heard about it, but I don't think it's worth discussing even this matter here. So let's not make a mountain out of a, a mole hole and uh, let's someone just decided in their garage to register an international association why should we even pay attention to that we our only concern uh, are, are critical remarks that we can handle and that, that we can improve there should be people who criticize us because they motivate us to reach higher and to aim higher there are difficulties there are issues that we can work on and that we can improve Today, IBA is the only international association that governs boxing uh, that receives the trust from 205 countries that are members of the organization. And those who want to leave or those who want to go to another association, 
Well, all I can say is that we have one association and uh, all the rules of boxing are of our ownership and we have the right to govern boxing. No one else besides IBA has the right to organize tournaments, for example. As for Interna is as for the um, national federations that left the association. Maybe uh, you've heard about the American uh, Federation leaving. Uh, maybe, uh, we ha have received at least five requests for accreditation uh, to become uh, the um, um, the Federation of of the U.S. So we have. Uh, a committee that is going to work on that issue and uh, they're going to evaluate the best request and we're going to uh, give accreditation to uh, the best candidate. Uh, so some uh, uh, functionaries, sports functionaries, they decided that they want to register and to create their own association. That's what they, uh, they say in the news, in the media, in the social networks. But I think it's all clear and it's all simple. We have received requests from people, from associations that don't want to politicize. They want to do sports. Uh, they want to do what they're good at. They want to develop the sport. Uh, as, for example, from the Netherlands, uh, there was um, uh, an athlete, um, a young lady who came to India, and then after participating in the World Championship, she was excluded. Uh, uh, and uh, th this is, uh, I think this is unacceptable. Uh, there are uh, functionaries, sports functionaries uh, that are like hyenas, hyenas like predators, you know, like animals, because I cannot call them any other way. Those people, they need to, they need to understand that, uh, that they do not belong here. They do not belong to clear sports. And I think that sports officers and sports functionaries, they're uh, obligation and their uh, responsibility is to promote sport and development of sport. I don't have the right to uh, prohibit anything for the athletes. All I have to do is to provide money if needed and assistance for athletes to come and participate and to at tournaments. Um, this is what our sport, one of the best uh, sports is about. We would like to to win over football, even in popularity. And if we'll win, if we'll succeed, then I think they are going to be really happy. Thank you very much. Now we have another guest question online. We have Ed Pula from the Independent joining us. Ed. Can I? Bear with us one moment. We're just going to check because of the technicalities. We're just going to make sure Ed is not there before we move on. Okay, it doesn't look I like... I am here. I am oh, here. Ed, you are here. Fabulous. I'm very yeah. sorry about that. Ed, sorry. Um, please go ahead with your question. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having this and the ability to uh, pose these questions. I, I'm, I'm wondering about the, the overall sponsorship for IBA and what is the status of the sponsorship with, with Gazprom? Are there other candidates to become, uh, become sponsors of IBA? And a second question, are, are the national federations receiving money equivalent to uh, what they formerly would receive from Olympic solidarity and uh, other other sources uh, within within the IOC that have been suspended uh, following these uh, sanctions against IBA. Thank you. Thank you, Ed. Um, Mr. Kremler will talk. As for national federations, in year 21, we spent $7 million to develop sports. Uh, we allocated this money to national federations. In year 22, uh, uh, we also spent at least eight or nine 
uh, million dollars uh, to develop boxing and this year uh, we uh, plan to allocate an amount of fifty thousand or one hundred thousand dollars per national federation uh, to develop boxing but of course every feder national federation they have to present an action plan on how they are planning to develop boxing in the country and after the evaluation by a specialized committee we're going to allocate that money for every country for every national federation and as for sponsorship we have a contract no uh, our contract ended uh, with Gazprom in 22, in December of 22, and we fulfilled all the requirements, uh, just as Gazprom did as well. We are grateful for Gazprom for their sponsorship and for helping us in uh, this this very difficult period. And as of today, we have plenty of other companies that are uh, sponsoring us and we are uh, negotiating a sponsorship with uh, bigger companies as well and as soon as we have results we're going to inform you about it in june and july we're going to have a new uh, a new sponsor at the moment there is no current live contract with gazprom thank you very much okay now we have another question online first of all we have Sujin Sun from China Daily now joining us. Please give it a moment for the video feed. Uh, thank you. Hello, everyone. Good morning and good evening. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, thanks. Uh, a reporter from China Daily, obviously uh, going to ask something about Chinese boxing. A question to Mr. Uh, Roy Jones Jr., if I may. Absolutely. This question for Roy Jones Jr. Please go ahead. Hey, Roy. Um, as a legend in a sport, we knew that you have been keeping an eye on a sports development in China, right? Working with some Chinese promotions, and also Chinese boxers, to help them promote the sport here in the world's most popular nation. As I mentioned in your opening remarks, it's critical for boxing to go really global, right? So China has to be involved. Could you say something about your understandings about how the sports is going here in China and what should be done to help better promote boxing in China, both on amateur and professional stage? Because we will have, as far as I knew, 10 boxers competing at the upcoming World Championships, which is quite a big representation, I think. Yeah, just could you say, say say something about that? Thanks, appreciate. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Chinese China has been doing very well uh, from a boxing standpoint since that they aren't really sending enough, I think, teams to different tournaments to get the recognition that they should get. Uh, the fighters have been doing really well when I've seen them, and I think if they continue to send them to these type of events that Aiba is wide open to help facilitate them come to. Uh, they'll do better and they get more recognition out of it. At the same time, uh, I was for a little while with Pro Box TV, who, who was also promoting boxing uh, out of China. They had, they had a online site that was shooting directly to, to China or China to the world uh, through Pro Box TV. And that was a good thing. So I think if they just continue to uh, promote and to back their athletes, they'll see a lot more out of it because... I mean, China does have some extremely good athletes in boxing, and um, they just found it out a couple weeks ago over in, in the UK. Uh, the big heavyweight, almost 39 years old, he upset Joe Joyce, and that was a big thing for China. So if they just continue to support their fighters, I think they'll get exactly what they're looking for. But they got to support them, and they have to send teams to these IBA tournaments. Thank you. Thank you very much. We just have one more online question here before we come back to the audience as well very shortly. So thank you for your patience too. Lots of questions to get in. We will get round to as many of you as possible. Please don't worry. But first, um, please, can we go to another online media um, question from Ludo Sands from Notify.com and he is Panama based. Can you hear us? Please go ahead with your question. Hey, thank you. Good evening. Can you hear me? I have a question for President Kremlin. 
Mr. Uh, Mr. President, uh, can you please offer us uh, details about IBA plan on professional boxing, especially in regards to collaboration and development, and also about the program, uh, the very successful program for IBA Champions Night event? Thank you. Can I just confirm that question? It was a little difficult to hear. Can I just confirm that you wanted Mr. Cromner to talk about IBA development for boxers? Is that correct? In regards to professional boxing? Perfect. Yep, we've got it. Thank you. I'll hand you over to Mr. Kremlev now to answer that question. Thank you. Uh, IBA is working and strongly collaborating with international federations as well and national federations. So our aim is uh, to eliminate uh, obstacles for professional boxers uh, to uh, also work with us. I don't think we need to have any prohibitions or any limitations for professional boxers uh, if they want to to do boxing professionally, uh, they should have the choice to do so. The, our main task is to provide the uh, the conditions for it. Uh, and we also uh, are ra raising uh, prize money, uh, and we uh, our plan is up until 2025, 26 to raise the prize money up until one million dollars, and uh, from 100,000, we're going to increase it by next year to 200,000, and the world champions are going to have the opportunity to defend their titles twice per year. Or we have a new tournament which is called the Night of Champions, where the world champion is going to defend their title in every category, and uh, those who uh, win now uh, the gold belt, the continental championship, or for example, European championship, or American, or in Oceania, Oceania, or in Asia, or in Africa, they uh, can uh, actually fight for, uh, against the world champions. And during the year, they're going to have those tournaments. And uh, the title holders have the opportunity to defend their titles. As for the continental tournaments, uh, one million dollar is the prize money for the champion and five hundred thousand dollars for the champions of the gold belt. This is what our collaboration with professional boxing is about. And besides uh, besides doing what they love, uh, they can also consider it as work. Uh, we have um, we're going to have a unified rating we have a separate belt and we have a united belts with with our international partners and WBA uh, and President Mendoza I would like to thank him he's a good friend and uh, we are going hand in hand and we're going to develop uh, the work that we have started and we're going to organize uh, common and, and united tournaments. Boxing is one and we are the ones who are educating and raising boxers and we need to accompany them in the future as well and we need to uh, support uh, boxing clubs. Every boxer needs to know that IBA is their home wherever they are, whatever happens to them, wherever they are geographically located, they can always turn to me personally, they can turn to IBA office and they will receive uh, full support, any support, even if they are in their family matters. We are here to assist and to support every boxer wherever they are from. We have no borders, we have no nationalities. We have one ideology, which is about boxing, and we are one huge boxing family. Uh, this program is a great one. It is efficient and it is successful. Uh, we've helped many coaches and boxers who turned to us, and this is what we're going to pursue in the future as well. Thank you very much. That's incredible prize money, $1 million by 2027. I should have gone into boxing too. Now, this lady at the front has been very keen to ask a question, so let's go to this lady at the front next, please, with the microphone. Thank you very much. 
please say your name and where you're from. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, hello, Isakova, Terminal My5. Uh, hello, Isakova from Terminal My5. Welcome. But firstly, I wanted to say a word of welcome to our guests uh, because it's a big, big pleasure to see you here in Uzbekistan. And Mr. Roy Jones, you were here several years ago, as I know, and yesterday you met with our boxers also. And I think you see the changes in our country and in our sports also. And uh, uh, so yesterday you spoke about football, uh, uh, Olympic football, and to tell you the truth, nobody provides such a high amount of prize money as for IBA. We see a very, uh, we also see that uh, uh, there are all the conditions for boxers. So for example, boxers can also uh, participate at tournaments with the beard and You've said that you fulfilled all the requirements of IOC, the 99%, right? And based on that, I just have the uh, uh, the impression that IOC does not really like you. And so the question is how to deal with the IOC and how to uh, meet uh, the remaining requirements of the IOC and what are the remaining um, uh, the requirements that are not yet met. Actually, in reality, I don't have any ambitions or any quarrels or troubles with the uh, International Olympic Committee. I don't have any problems, but we should understand that they are a separate organization. Uh, we are separate organization. And uh, IBA is uh, only focusing on one type of the sport, while International Olympic Committee deals with different types of the sports. And uh, every questions, all the questions that were Posed that were requested from us were answered. Um, uh, we have requested, uh, we have answered, and I should be honest. I cannot uh, be very flexible and decide and. Uh, accept their challenges and accept um, their requirements. We have a lot of problems inside that we, we are trying to solve. I am creating the conditions for the athletes, for the youngsters, to, those are coming to the box, starting from the gloves, starting from the purchase of the gloves and their food up to uh, becoming their champions. And instead of uh, spending spending uh, my energy for International Olympic Committee, I prefer spending my energy for the youngsters who just came to the sport. And for me, for me, my uh, mission is to support sports and to support the athletes. My mission is not to uh, to attract International Olympic Committee or to make them like me or to to um, persuade them to like me. So each and every organization has its own responsibility to be president of IOC or to be president of IBA. It's not a privilege. It's not just the uh, status, it's not an authoritarian authority. You are not becoming an or someone or something. It's just an a responsibility. As for me, it's a hobby. It's my mindset. I love box uh, boxing. I uh, from the childhood I was into boxing so much, and when I visit different countries, I always as a gift I give gloves. I may present one thousand gloves, five hundred gloves. I am from a poor family, and I have been into uh, in this uh, conditions when I could not buy gloves while I wanted to have gloves and I wanted to fight. So my mission is to help all these kids who want to be a boxer. And I don't need any political uh, political steps and actions. For me, 
words uh, don't mean much. For me, the action means much more. We should not consider a person as of his outfit, but we should consider him as his internal uh, ego and is his internal uh, mindset. All my colleagues should understand that whatever uh, if someone uh, if someone is trying to make a deal out of the athletes to earn something because of the athletes whatever these people are earning isn't it's is something that I would not be using for and for for the income for myself uh, for me for me for me boxing is a hobby for me it's something from the bottom of my heart it's it's way of my my soul and mind i am proud that the uh, olympic champion the world champion is here with us and i'm very happy that boxing is developing right now and i'm very happy that roy jones is today with us that Estella is today with us and I'm very happy that boxing is being managed by boxers now and uh, for example Mr. Wu uh, became president he created corruption he 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 brought to he brought to the bankruptcy basically saying and and uh, here we should not speak only about me we should speak about the action let's let's make a um, dispute uh, resolution let's sit at the table uh, let's make a round table and decide what's wrong and what's right and and uh, the founder of the olympic movement um, is uh, uh, has changed for example all the all the people are changing today i'm uh, the president tomorrow someone else will be and people are changing the the positions are changing so uh, it's not only about me it's so if people are talking about mr wu uh, ck wu uh, has been fired by national federations because uh, independent investigation has been held and it has proved that in all the problems and in all the corruption schemes and actions uh, SKVU was playing a role and there are some people who are involved with and Invo was involved in these actions they were connected to SK CKV and um, I don't really want to to deal with this this is their own solution uh, decisions decision and the boxers from Europe uh, are being silent now in Lausanne and etc but this is just the beginning and I'm sure that the the justice will be will be evident and um, as far as I know, more than 500 people at the first time and uh, at the second time there was 1,000 people uh, from Africa and other countries. They were they were telling me that they would like to have a meeting with uh, confronting um, the Olympic Committee and uh, identifying the problems. The athletes are not going to give up and um, and no one haven't haven't uh, uh, no one haven't um, this uh, no one wants any conflicts all of us want to negotiate it uh, do the resolution and live in peace there should be no uh, no conflict in sport because sport is all about health about healthy person healthy relationship and all the uh, oh, sport is more about the social movement it's all about the doing good deeds and when we say about federation it doesn't mean that um, uh, when uh, someone is leaving our association it doesn't mean that uh, we should stop doing our deeds
и живет за счет этого членства. Не имея ни спонсоров, ничего, да. Вот. Ну, такие функционеры у нас не должны быть. Вот взять, где, например, там Нидерланды, где их боксеры, которые участвуют на Европе. Ну, то есть, что сделали эти люди, чтобы говорить о чем-то, да, там. Если ты хочешь прийти и что-то возглавить, и чтобы тебе люди доверили, как они доверили мне, да, они же не доверяют на словах, они доверяют, что ты сделал, в какой стране. Вот я в некоторые страны приезжаю, и я в удивлении, в ужасе. Они мне рассказывают, что у них никогда к ним не приезжал президент. И я когда приезжаю к ним в зал, к боксерам, они говорят, да не может быть. Никогда такого не было, чтобы президент пришел разговаривать с тренерами. Вот я, у меня всегда на, на турнирах встречи с спортсменами. With the president because they're afraid to say something wrong. So, uh, even the press conference is open. I want everyone to see the honesty, the transparency, and here. Uh, when it comes to the Olympics, we definitely will will try to get into the Olympics. And uh, there are some sport uh, sports authorities uh, who are related to Mr. CK um, Wu, who are trying to to uh, break the deal. But I hope that we will uh, reach our goal and. Uh, and I believe that sport is very. I'm sorry, I'll have to come back to you just to give somebody else an opportunity. Okay. Oh, we will come back to you again if we if we can. Thank you so much. If we could please go to the gentleman. Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry, I didn't realize you had. Are you ready? Would you like a question? Yes, of course. Salam alaikum. Здравствуйте, Anwar. My question goes to Estelle and Roy. My question goes to Roy and Estelle. So there are many associations and federations who do not accept uh, athletes from Belarus and Russia. And from early on, from early childhood, we've been taught not to mix politics with sports. And I know that uh, there are many associations who do not let uh, athletes from Russia and, and, and Belarus uh, to participate in such tournaments and championships. What's your view and what's your stance on this? Can you please elaborate? D'entraînement, énormément d'années de sacrifice, et euh, c'est très difficile pour un athlète et pour une so, personne. Uh, for every athlete, uh, his career depend, uh, is based on effort, on plenty of hours of training. We cannot actually let a politics ruin his dreams and to, to make all his efforts to go in vain. I'd like to emphasize that at IBA we do not prohibit athletes from any country uh, to participate in in our sports events and us athletes independently of politics we only speak about sport sport and to to dedicate themselves to and athletes come to tournaments to win. They can come from uh, any country. And I think every every athlete has the aim to succeed. And I believe that every athlete has the right uh, to uh, receive 
compensation for the effort and for the time that they spent training. Yeah. I don't want to get too far into it, but for example, the Bozenko Tov right there, that was the guy who was Ukrainian. And Ukraine and Russia is at war right now, but we're not caring about what race nobody is. We just deal because we're sports. He did a beautiful thing. He fought back in a concentration camp in Germany to help people get free. I mean, it's about the will to win. And that's why that, that trophy right there is for will. That's saying a lot that we're not worried about politics. And he was in a political situation, political situation then, but it's still fault. So it's like sports are supposed to separate politics. You understand me? I was in the car the other day on my way here. I was in Miami. I had two friends driving me. One was Russian, one was Ukraine. And I'm American. We all together in the United States. So why do we let politics bother what we're doing? What we're doing, we, we're not political. We don't care. We just love one another. We respect effort. We respect hard work. We respect good hearts. And IBA is promoting that. So if you can't promote that, it's, it's almost like me. Why would I not get mad at the whole Olympic committee and everybody else? Because I got robbed of a gold medal at the peak of my amateur career. I'm not mad. I'm trying to get with IBA and hopefully get our seat to understand too that we're just trying to redo this thing the right way, make it fair so that doesn't happen to anybody else. That's the whole purpose. Bring us all together and keep it real. That's what we're about. So we all serve the same God, just be on the same quota, and let's go. That's how I see it. Thank you very much. We will come back to audience in a moment. We're just going now to Sean McCaldrick. He's from Sunday World Island and he's joining us remotely. Sean, are you there? Uh, good afternoon. Hi, Sean. We can hear you. Thank you. Please go ahead with your question. OK, I have two questions for the president. Uh, the first one is the um, IOC in response to uh, last week's announcement by the IBA of uh, they released uh, a list of eligible boxers uh, for the European Games. The IOC again said that the IBA would have no role in boxing in either the qualification or the tournament itself in Paris. So in light of that, I'm just wondering, will the IBA uh, sanction country, national federations and our boxers who take part in the Olympic qualifier in Poland? Uh, and my second question is that in the budget, the, I, the IBA budget for this year, there was no money provided. There was no provision for prize money for boxers. So I'm just wondering, how, where is the money coming from that was uh, for prize money at the women's championships and at the men's championships um, that are taking place in Tashkent? Thank you. Every championship, well, the, the licenses for every championship, uh, they start from $5 million. So every country, the host country, they uh, have the responsibility to organize the championship and to pay for the license. And the money, the license money, uh, is the financial source uh, to provide uh, the prize money. As I've said, uh, the money of the association, they all go, they all dedicate it to the athletes. Just like in India or here in Uzbekistan. And besides, we sell TV rights. Uh, more than one, uh, 111, and this time 120 uh, TV uh, licenses were sold. And uh, we also have money deriving from, uh, from marketing. Uh, sports, uh, the boxing is a very popular sport. It does not require much PR and uh, it is quite a popular sport and thank uh, thankfully there are many companies who are willing to sponsor boxing uh, for example companies that uh, produce gloves uh, so we have no financial problems and we're going to increase the list of sponsors and uh, we are looking forward to signing 
additional contracts uh, with the uh, general and major sponsors in the future. As for IOC, I haven't read about it. I haven't seen it, but uh, this is this might be one of their decisions. But I'm sure that we have all the conditions uh, that athletes require. We uh, or organize tournaments and and uh, do you think that if we have uh, medals made of pure gold, we don't have the opportunity to give full accreditation for our athletes? I don't think so. Thank you very much. Okay, if we could please go to the gentleman here. Thank you. I have a question I'm from Uzbekistan. Uh, there, there was a legendary coach here in Uzbekistan, and last year, uh, there was a documentary made about a coach in, in another country, and I wish that uh, that we could actually produce a movie of a famous and legendary coaches uh, for example in uzbekistan that would be a great idea and i think we should uh, speak about the theory of boxing uh for 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 uh, for for uh, an athlete to become a boxer they need to be creative they need to have a good mentality my opinion is that journalists they have they opened their instagram accounts and they forgot about their profession one has to become a real journalist you know to raise awareness to speak about boxing and to be passionate about boxing and to be involved in boxing to be able to convey the love and the knowledge about boxing so that's what it makes a good uh, journalist I, I'm sure that this uh, this question uh, is is more directed to journalists of course we try to work on uh, our collaboration cooperation with journalists there are many talented journalists and I'm sure that there are passionate and professional. Now we are thinking about creating a pool of journalists that love boxing, that report about boxing and that uh, that is worth supporting. As for Uzbekistan, Uzbekistan now is the capital of world boxing and its athletes they are world famous and thanks to thanks to uh, the uh, the contribution from Uzbekistan and millions are able to follow the championship and the history of boxing in Uzbekistan is a very rich uh, history and uh, for example, Andrei Barzenko, you just mentioned the coach, and he, uh, this coach, he also used to live in Uzbekistan, and his children still live here in Tashkent. Uh, and he, during uh, the Second World War, Andrei Barzenko, he uh, spent uh, years in Buchenwald in the camp and actually he he was he uh, had 80 bouts and he won every bout uh he was hungry he did not he was malnutrition however he continued training he continued boxing and it is really interesting to hear about his story and thanks to him in in buchenwald uh several prisoners were able to escape and to flee the camp, thanks to which uh, there were a great number of people who, who escaped. Indeed, uh, his story is 
fascinating and Andrei Barzenko and his image his uh, his his image is going to be handed over to the champions here in uh, Uzbekistan our boxers have always been brave they were never broken for example Muhammad Ali we all know how how, how spiritual he was, how righteous he was, how he fought for the right of boxing and for human rights. Uh, we have many characters like him. For example, Roy Jones, uh, his fate and his history is not an easy one. He's, uh, mad he, he was deprived from his medal and us as IBA, we followed his story and we recorded historical facts about uh, Roy Jones. And for some reason, uh, IOC does not want to recognize Roy Jones. Roy is here now because he wants to he wants to keep on fighting because his fate, his career was broken, and he wants to avoid. Mm, that that this happens again that this is repeated he is here to defend athlete he participates he is present at every tournament and he always says i don't want my story uh, to happen to anyone else in the future and we have plenty of exemplary boxers and the boxing uh, was always independent and fought for its independence one cannot govern boxing from the outside. Boxing makes its own decisions and follows its own way. Thank you, Mr. Kremlev. We are now going to go back to one of our remote journalists for a question before we return to the audience members. Um, so joining us now is Dan Wheeler. Dan, can you hear me okay? Dan, are you able to hear us here? We'll just give Dan one moment to go ahead with the question. If not, we'll return to the audience. Yeah, members. Yeah, yeah, yes, are you hearing me? Excellent, Dan, we can hear you. Please go ahead with your question. Yes, hi, my name is Danny Wheeler from The Gleaner in Jamaica. This is um, a question for you, the president or the general secretary. I'm curious, given the situation with, um, as well, with, with the IOC, IOC um, where does you think that leaves um, Caribbean countries such as Jamaica when they are trying to um, to qualify for, for the Olympics and they see this as kind of their only pathway? And what assurances can be given, especially to countries in the Caribbean, um that their olympic dreams will still be um be intact depending on what the situation with the ioc and two um what in terms of profession for professional fighters being able to compete in the olympics um especially when you have um a lot of jamaican professionals that are now um doing well what um what kind of where's the where's the timeline um, do you see that professional fighters can be able to be um, competing in the Olympics? So that's that it for me, thanks. Thank you very much. That question to Mr. Kremlev no. or to Mr. Olympus. Yeah, I would like to say that, uh, speaking about IOC, um, we cannot decide on themselves but on our regard we can say that we will be trying to comply with our rules and trying to get our rights and freedoms and uh, talking about the athletes who will be going to the championship we will have no sanctions towards the athletes and actually we never even give recommendations to sanction any of the athletes we are only keen on supporting the athletes 
Uh, talking about the professionals, and uh, I have already said, and I will repeat it one more time, we have no objections or no any um, any uh, prohibitions for the athletes. Thank you very much. I think we just have time for a couple more audience questions at the moment. So we're going to try and go to somebody I'm afraid that we haven't yet asked. We've only got time for a couple more. Um, to the gentleman at the back there, please. Um, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm a young independent journalist from Uzbekistan. And so my question is related to Mr. Jones. So Mr. Jones, uh, from your point of view, uh, who is uh, which country is the favorite uh, in this uh, championship? <laughs> <laughs> it's quite naturally that Uzbekistan will be the favorite because they're at home. I mean, duh. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, we're just going to take another question here with the lady. Thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Donc, uh, je suis Madame Anta Gay uh, du Sénégal, secrétaire générale du Sénégal, uh, board of member de l'AFPC. Donc, uh, là, je voudrais uh, poser ma question au, à mon ami uh, Georges, secrétaire général de Dubaï, uh, sur uh, la qualification aux Jeux Olympiques uh, de 2024 de Paris. Regarding les continents, est-ce que Dubaï autorise? As for the uh, Olympic Games, IBA, does, the, uh, does IBA let national federations to participate in the qualifying process? Okay, let me just sum up. Do you allow IBA to conduct uh, qualifiers? And my second question goes to President uh, Kremlov. A Japanese uh, uh, my uh, question uh, refers to the recommendations that were provided by the Japanese. Of course, the system. The, of course, the system allows it. Okay, and over to George, please. Vous me permettez de parler en anglais, s'il vous plaît, pour comprendre tout le monde. Merci. First of all, of what the president before disclosed about the Japanese new score system. Uh, Mr. Chris Roberts, the uh, director of uh, development, and me we will meet uh, June, Japan, in order to have uh, an official presentation and to to test uh, and to check the this proposition in a real time. Yes. yes. And as concerned the qualification now, uh, I would like to tell you that uh, uh, it is not. It doesn't exist a clear um, qualification process in uh, in uh, by IOC. First of all, in Africa, because of the uh, postponement of the African Games, we don't have a qualification event there. We don't know what uh, what uh, will happen and when and how and who will participate and uh, where and all these kind of things. We have a fog. In uh, in the same uh, same time, I would like to. Uh, to mention to you that our opinion, the IBA opinion, is that uh, cannot be outside of the qualification the um, uh, world champions. The world champions must, must be automatically uh, uh, qualified. And then uh, to take into account the, uh, the results of the ranking. For this reason, in uh, Europe, we last week, we uh, announced the 30, 350 athletes which are eligible according to the results, the official results, to participate in the European Games. 
in order that don't uh, uh, come uh, other athletes which they don't have they don't deserve to participate there because there are athletes which belong to IBA they are our athletes they are our people and these people uh, uh, have rights to participate in uh, in all processes according to their results for this reason we are doing the the results we have the winners and we do the um, we have also the ranking this is the ranking is what is uh, uh, giving ex the exact number of the athletes who can participate and um, if the president will permit me i would like to give some numbers because the president is a, a person with low profile and he didn't mention very well what happened look when uh, he became president he faced, first of all, a debt of 20 million. The, the Federation was bankrupted completely, 20 million debt. And he's the person who helped this uh, situation to be solved, the debt to be covered, and now to be in the position to have a great uh, championship here in Uzbekistan and another in uh, India with a record of participation. I would like to mention also that uh, as the president, uh, um, uh, disclosed before that uh, we had we have uh, also um uh, sponsors how how we find the question the money i will give you exact exact numbers the fee for india was 2.4 million of the organization this 2.4 million as the president told are giving as prize money to the athletes here in uzbekistan the fee, the organizational fee is 5 million. We give to the athletes 5.2 million. Everything we take, we give it to the athletes. You need, this is clear. You know, I, I give you numbers, know what is happening around. As concerns now the, uh, uh, the sponsors, we have a sponsorship agreement with Stink, six years. We established this last, uh, last year and uh, the last week we signed a four years contract with a licensing contract with the adidas we signed a one month before with tyson and with other 10 big names in the uh, uh, the sports business in the sports market uh, companies which are supporting us and uh, constitute our revenues means that uh, you have a clear picture what uh, what from where they are coming the the money and i would like to tell you that um, because i would like as i'm economist and i would like to to speak with the numbers iba is an in the national federation with 204 national federations i kindly ask you don't compare us with virtual entities all the others are virtual they don't exist we are the home of boxing and uh, President Kremlev and his board of directors is doing a revolution here, is doing a revolution for the boxers. And unfortunately, this very good board of directors is paying the bill of others. They created this situation to the boxing and now this board of directors is taking to pay the bill of the others this to be clear and uh, i'm answering also to the question that um, the 5th of may a few days after iba will uh, present to the um, uh, ioc a package of all the answers and what we did in all this period and i'm i feel very proud to be part of this as a member of the iba the revolution which we did and the big change which we did is a package like this and we'll give it to the IOC in order to support what we are telling that we change. And we are changing for us. We are not changing for anybody else. And I close with the following. Um, Olympics is a very nice and very beautiful tree. We would like to be very close to this tree. But also IBA has to deal with other trees has around we want to to deal with our forest the boxers 
and uh, we love this tree, but we need to take care about also the forest, the boxing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, George. Now we have one more question online. Uh, okay, inside the games, and then we have the BBC. It's not friendly well. media for us, but uh, you have the, the, the floor for a second time. There we go. My question is to the president. Um, in December, during the uh, Congress in Abu Dhabi, uh, it was said that uh, a sponsorship with Gazprom was supposed to be renewed. Um, the exact uh, quote is, uh, Gazprom helped us to become independent and made us financially stable. And it says, uh, we are in the process of renewing or uh, we are ready to renew. And you asked the floor, about are you ready to i mean are you agreeing with that and floor gave a rounding applause for that uh can you please clarify what went down with the gas from sponsorship and uh, secondly at the iba world championships here there are four uh, neutral athletes from uh, participating i wanted to know if the iba is financially funding them to come here and participate uh um, I can see that inside the games does not really like me too much because the questions are very strict and tough, I would say. First of all, the question, the issue was, was not about the renewal of the contract. Some sport authorities were giving us the recommendations on on uh, breaching on finishing up the contract on uh, on uh, terminating the contract and uh, we did not terminate the contract because we had some obligations that we had to complete because both of the sides had the obligations that we had to complete and we did and despite interest of the box and if uh, national federations would ask are they against Gazprom to be the sponsor or are they support Gazprom to be the sponsor most of them in the beginning were saying we are against but during the cons uh, congress while asking this question all the Congress said, no, there are no objections of Gazprom to be the sponsor. And we, first of all, we should support our own needs and desires and interests. And if there is an opportunity, please extend the contract. Please renew the contract. And we have delivered this message to Gazprom and we are very thankful to Gazprom for giving us this support. And shall they want to extend the contract we will not be against it and as of today the question is open the contract has been terminated the it has been expired and so far we haven't renewed it yet but we are working on a break even uh, we are working at break even and and we are trying to be self-sufficient. We want to have a general sponsor partner. We want to be uh, to have the uh, assisting partner. And in upcoming days, we will uh, speak and uh, speak about it and tell about it. Thank you very much. We are now going to go to a question remotely from Alex Kapchik from the BBC. Alex, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, yes, I can. Oh, I'm sorry. Can we come back to the second question? I'm just, we have a guest waiting online. We'll come back to you very imminently. We'll just take Alex from the BBC and then we'll come straight back to you. Thank you. Alex, are you able to hear me okay? Uh, yes, I can. Hi. Hi, Alex. Thanks for joining us. Please go yes. ahead with your question. Yeah, a uh, question for the President. Um, you, you seemed earlier pretty dismissive of World Boxing's attempts to set up their own Federation, their own organization. Uh, World Boxing said they were doing that because it was the only way they could uh, help with the future of boxing in the Olympics. Um, 
I mean, how confident are you that boxing will be part of the LA Games in 2028? And would you be prepared to keep boxing away from the Olympic movement if the conditions aren't right for you? Hey, thank you very much. Uh, Speaking about those personas who are dealing with of of us uh, speaking out uh, lobbying the mottos and that all the countries should be supporting them uh, actually those are th those parties they are not really supporting the athletes they're not even supporting with the gloves or the shorts or anything they're just uh, screaming out the mottos they are more keen on earning box not developing it they have no desire to develop it to invest in it to 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 develop boxing and we are the boxing association boxing society on behalf of the boxers i can say that uh, boxers are the trigger of the federation of the association and i represent their rights and freedoms and i am i am uh, acting on their behalf and I will do and we will do everything possible for and and Olympics is more about the athletes people come to Olympics to watch the athlete not to watch the authority authorities on um, to see the um, uh, VIPs because the athletes are the most important, the core of the sport. And I believe that boxers and fans should, should always be a priority. And I don't know what decisions will uh, we will have from the sport functioners, from the sport authorities. Uh, we are not trying to intervene their deal and uh, we are not trying to somehow change their decision but on my behalf i can say that we will be trying to uh to support and uh, uh to get our rights and freedoms to be in place and uh, very soon we'll have a new we'll have new election to ioc and we will uh, be um, developed and on top. Thank you. Back to you inside again to finish the rest of your question. If you just hold it down for a couple of seconds, it should be okay. There's a second microphone on its way. <laughs> uh, just to clarify again, uh, there are four uh, mutual athletes participating at this World Championships, if I'm right. Uh, I was wondering if the IBA is financially assisting them. Can you please uh, there, are, there are at least from four uh, neutral nations, Germany, Scotland, I think some of them who've pulled out. Uh, at least the national federations have pulled out. Poland, I think, is one of them. Uh, I just want to know if the IBA is financially assisting them to participate here. First of all, we will be financing, financing it all. It's not the decision of the athletes. It's the decision of the authorities of the bodies and uh, we have disciplinary commission that is dealing with that and uh, we have the associations that those want to be part of the iba from those countries uh, we have four requests from usa because they are the first ones who tried to boycott uh, so uh, we have four associations from usa who are trying to be part of iba and we are checking their qualification and criteria so 
the most important is that these people who are trying to break uh, the belt um, system, who are trying to input the corruption, who are trying to break the sportsmen, get the money, uh, who are trying to uh, just earn money, who are trying to earn because of the boxing, uh, they their deeds will not be uh, are not welcomed and they will not achieve success. So we are working for the boxing idea, and we already have the requests. And uh, uh, I sh I want to underline that IBA is international uh, social organization, uh, public organization, and uh, we should take care of it. And our mission is is our athletes, our sportsmen, and they are, uh, they are priority for us. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today, and um, I'm sorry we can't get through. And Oh, one more question. You're in luck. Okay, one more question, please, to the gentleman there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Overruled. <laughs> Finally, I've got... Uh, I'm really grateful for this invitation. Thank you very much for this wonderful organization. And thank you all so much for this opportunity. Oh, excuse me. My name is Sadullah. I'm comedian. <laughs> Uzbek love? Plof. Plof. It's food. <laughs> oh, food. It's food, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> now, I love the food. Do you like? Food. Yes, food is no. great. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Can, I, can I just say that actually Roy complained today? Because at 5 a.m. he ate plov, and then actually he put on, put on some kilos, like five kilos. And because he, he eats plov all the time and it adds to his weight. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Now, just to share. And actually, uh, well, this is the secret of the Uzbek boxers. They are so strong because they eat plov. There's no doping, there are no drugs. This is the Uzbek secret of success. There we go. Well, thank you very much. And I'll just double check that there are no more comments from the panel before we close the conference. Any further comments? Wonderful. Okay, great. Fabulous. Thank you ever so much, everyone, for coming to us today. Thank you. Have a lovely day.